Hello everyone and welcome to Curious and Learning. This video is about normal or Gaussian distribution. The purpose of this video is to familiarize you with the terminology used around normal distribution. We will learn about examples, parameters like mean and variance, 68-95-99 rule, properties of normal distribution and finally standard normal curve and z-scores. So let's start with the examples of normal distribution. Normal distribution looks something like this. So why the name normal distribution? So normal distribution captures events that we see in our day-to-day -day lives or are very common, such as height, weight, or size of objects, errors produced by a machine, or test scores. That is why it has the name normal distribution. Now let's get right into the parameters of normal distribution. Okay, so we did, did discuss that size of objects follow a normal distribution. So let's look uh, at the diameter of a cookie. What happens is I go to a factory and it manufactures cookies and I take three samples. I see that the diameters are 5 cm, 5.1 and 4.9. So I get an idea that, okay, these cookies are about the same size with slight variation. What I do next is collect a sample of 500 cookies and plot a histogram. So then the shape starts looking something like this and it does look like a normal distribution, right? And also I notice that these readings are actually centered about 5 cm, which is the first parameter that we're discussing, the mean of this distribution. I take another example. I look at the height of males in a city, take readings for a sample, plot a histogram and again lay over a normal curve. Okay, I again notice this parameter appearing in this distribution, the mean, which is 172 centimeters. So this is the first parameter. What I do note in both of these examples is that although most of the readings stick close to the mean, there is some spread in data. Right? Like in the example of cookies, we have mean of 5 cm, but we do observe cookies with diameter of 4.7, 4.8, or 5.1, 5.2. Similarly, for height of males, we do see that most of the readings concentrate around 172 cm, but maybe like 156 or 160 cm is not that uncommon, or you do see some readings like of that. And then some readings as far as 190 are also observed. So this is the spread in data and to capture this we have another parameter called the standard deviation. Okay, so now we have some intuition about these two parameters of the distribution mean which is the central uh, figure around which the readings of the distribution concentrates and the spread that is getting captured by standard deviation. Based on this we try to understand our 68-95-99 rule. So this is an empirical rule that estimates the area under curve with given standard deviations. So before understanding this rule, we do note one thing that area under the curve of a distribution sums up to 1. Okay, so what I do is, I know that mean is the central feature or central characteristic of my distribution. Around this mean, if I go leftward, that is one standard deviation left or rightward. That is one standard deviation to the right of mean. I see that this area is represented by my green region and this is 68% of my area. That is 0.68 of the whole area which sums up to 1 is captured within one standard deviation left or right of mean. Similarly, I try to see that what is the area just in half of this that is either left or right. I see it can be split exactly into half of 34%. Now when I do the same thing for two standard deviations which is red plus green area that is getting captured in two standard deviations that is 95% and when I split it into two I find it to be 47.5%. Okay, I do the same thing for three standard deviations. The area captured within purple, red and green regions. So within three standard deviations left or right of mean, 99.7% of the area gets covered. 
so in short this rule can be put as follows within one standard deviation 68% of the area gets covered within two standard deviations 95% of the area gets covered and within three standard deviations 99.7.7% of the area gets covered and hence 68 95 99 rule okay now that we have understood so much about the parameters and and have an understanding of with increasing standard deviation how the area under the curve varies let us look at properties of normal distribution so as you've already seen this distribution looks like a bell curve second thing is this distribution is symmetric about its mean and we have noticed this the third thing is that the shape of normal density curve remains same with change in mean so what does this mean i have this curve which has a mean of 0 what if i take like you know take this curve and take it to the left or right of 0 on the number line what happens is it looks exactly the same that is it is translation invariant so everything remains the same the green curve is the new curve with mean shifted to 7 and standard deviation 1 everything looks the same except for its location on the number line now that was the first parameter that we were trying to vary let's try to play with the standard deviation of the curve what happens if i change standard deviation increase or decrease it decrease it first case is that of increasing it so let's say i have a curve with mean at 0 and standard deviation at 1 what if i try to double the standard deviation in that case i will double the spread of data so the readings that were sticking close to the mean will start shifting away from the mean and that will flatten the curve that sounds about right okay what happens if i try to decrease the standard deviation or that means decrease the spread in data so the readings that were away from the mean come closer to the mean which means for a curve with mean at 0 and standard deviation at 1 gets more concentrated towards the mean all right so these properties i hope seem intuitive to you now now based on your understanding let's work out some application so you are a consultant and are hired by a company that manufactures cookies the requirement is to design a wrapper for the cookies so that at least 99 percent of them can be packed so you do your homework as a consultant and find out that you know after collecting a sample of 500 to 1000 cookies the mean of these cookies is 5 centimeter and standard deviation is about 0.05 centi 0.05 centimeters all right now we have studied fortunately the 68 95 99 rule you are supposed to capture 99 percent of the cookies into a wrapper and we know within what variation of standard deviations 99 percent of the data gets captured that is if you move three standard deviations left or right that will capture 99 percent of the data but since smaller cookies will always fit into a bigger wrapper what we can do is do mu plus three sigma and report this figure for 99 percent of the cookies to fit into the wrapper all right so please with your last report you were asked for another design suggestion you need to report an estimate for the sieve size such that the food grains larger than 80 percent of the mean size are retained and the rest below threshold pass out so what the problem is if i make it more lucid you take some grains and you want 20 percent of the biggest of them to be retained and the rest 80 percent are uh, made to pass out so in this case uh, we can do something similar to our cookies example so the first step we take we find out that the mean is 4 millimeters standard deviation is 0 0.2 millimeters okay but the next step we really get stuck because we do not know that for how many standard deviations uh, 
eighty percent of the area in the distribution is captured. Okay, so this is where we will learn about standard normal curves and z-scores, and it will help us to work out this application. So let's get into it. Standard normal curve. It is actually very simple. We have studied so much about normal curves. What if I give you a normal curve with mean at zero and standard deviation at one? This is precisely what our standard normal curve is. So why study it especially? This is because a lot of calculations become easier for standard normal curve than with than for a normal curve with any mean or any standard deviation. So we will see later how this makes our lives easier. But for now, this is what a standard normal curve is. The second most interesting thing is the z-scores. So remember where we got stuck? We do not know that at what point, you know, from the mean, or where in this normal distribution, do we have eighty percent of our area covered? So do you look at this figure? This, you know, dark green area is let's say the eighty percent that the size of the grains we want to you know sieve out, and this. region this place this mark is what we need to find out how far away from the mean do i need to go so that 80% of the area gets covered and that is exactly what z score will do so this is why we need to learn about the z scores now let's look at it more mathematically it represents how many standard deviations sigma below or above the mean a data point x is You have already seen what was the importance. Now you are just seeing it mathematically. So z is how far is it away from the mean? That is x minus mu, and then you divide it by sigma to scale it with the standard deviation. So again, in words you can say it: x is z times sigma away from mu. And why do we calculate z scores? Because instead of you know studying the distribution of these raw data points x we can study the distribution of z scores and z scores is nothing but a standard normal curve and like i told you standard normal curve makes our lives easier for a lot of calculations we want to compute z scores so let us you know try to visualize this z score we have studied the importance of z score we know what z score is but let us just try to build a little more intuition around it so let's say i gave you a distribution with mean 5 and standard deviation 0.8 now you see there are so many points x all over this distribution i just randomly pick a point of let's say x equals 6.5 so i want to shift this entire distribution to mean of 0 so the mu itself when i shift it by mu it becomes zero that means mu minus mu zero all the other points shift by x minus mu so the point of 6.5 when i shift it by 5 became 1.5 or let's say another point x equals 3 when i shift it by 5 it becomes 3 minus 5 equals minus 2 as simple as that now let's c x minus mu is how many times sigma that is exactly what a definition of z score was when we shifted this curve which was let's say denoted by z dash when we scale it by sigma again we get the z score and the distribution of z scores so you see that originally we had this curve which was which looked something like this and now we try to increase the standard deviation because we are scaling it by a smaller de standard deviation so we are effectively increasing the standard deviation from 0.8 to 1 so the curve flattens out and this is what our final distribution looks like now back to the z scores we understood how to compute z scores we understood why we need z scores but now let us see how will we get area from these z scores so what happens is we have a table computed for a standard normal curve already in which if you see the left column where z is written the leftmost column that gives you the first the the 
integer and the first decimal position so let's say 0 0.2 0 0.3 or 1.0 or 1.5 that you take from the left column leftmost column then you see the uppermost row that gives you your second decimal for the z score so let's say if i had to compute if i had to look at the z score 0 0.55 i will take 0 0.5 from my row of 0 0.5 and the second decimal of 5 from my column of 0 0.05 so if you add 0 0.5 plus 0 0.05 it becomes 0 0.55 okay so for this z score we get a value now what does this value represent now this value is exactly the area that gets covered up to the z score and remember this is something what we actually wanted this is what we were getting stuck at we wanted to know a z score until which 80 percent of the area gets covered so the value that you're looking at 0 0.7088 we want that value to be 0 0.8 or 80 percent and we want to find a z score corresponding to it right okay before that uh, if you do not want to use a z score table what we can do is use statistical packages so for two of the most commonly used languages python and r i show the commands how to find out the area covered up till the z score that you can mention okay back to our application so you want to use either the scores table z score table or statistical package to find out what is that z score for which 80 percent of the area gets covered so in the table if we are using we find out that the figure closest the area that we can see closest to 80 percent is this 0 0.8023 towards the right i have 0 0.8051 toward going down i have 0 0.8289 so then this looks like the closest i can get to the 80 percent mark or for even more precise results you can use the statistical packages but for now let's use the z-score table so for 0 0.8023 area i get the z-score 0.8 plus 0 0.05 that is 0 0.85 so now i have what i needed i have my z-score 0.85 and i know that how the z-score is computed it is x minus mu by sigma and so if i want to find out the exact reading x that is z score into sigma by plus mu substituting these values i get that the size of grain that should be sieved is less than equal to 4.17 millimeters and i report this figure great so this is all for this video please do let me know in the comments section what you thought about this video and there is if there is anything else you would like to have discussed thank you and see you again soon